I made the first contact. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. Today I've got another preview from IT at Guys. We're talking about a new Sonoff product. Previously I talked about Sonoff Zigbee Bridge, which isn't available for sale, but if you want to have a preview, there's a video there for you to click. Well, today, today we're going to talk about this contact sensor because... Well, because I'm confused. Now, Sonoff is about to release an array of Zigbee products which are known for low power solutions and uh, perfect for sensors like this. And this is Wi-Fi. So what gives? If you previously took Sonoff apart, you know that inside you can find either ESP8285 or 8266. Now those chipsets aren't really known for low power consumption, so it's definitely not what is inside. And I've made a full out of myself during the live stream because I was not able to pair this. Why? I didn't know this has a Bluetooth. So it has a Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth. I highly doubt that there is an ESP32 inside, so there must be another solution. I'm really eager to open this up for you. If you happen to see that live stream, probably know what's inside and how it works. If not, just stay around because I have a couple of in interesting information. In my defense, because this is a preview, it came without any instructions or markings whatsoever how to get started. Fortunately, after the live stream, I've been told how to pair this and how to make it work. It turns out if you scroll through pairing methods in eWeeLink app, you'll find also a Bluetooth pairing method, something I've not had a chance to use it. And this is how you pair this contact sensor with eWeeLink app. Because the sensor is very responsive, I've highly doubt that they used the ESP32 and it would be such an overkill for such a device. We know it works over the Wi-Fi, so I think it's time to get this open and investigate what lies inside and what to expect. This contact sensor is slightly bigger than Amazon Dash. Actually, a couple of months ago, I did a similar project when I would adapt Amazon Dash as a contact sensor. And uh, let's see if it still works. If you're interested, there is a link on the screen. Yeah, it still works. Okay, uh, inside you'll find uh, this PCB powered by two AAA battery, so this is clearly a 3 volt device. Now, on the PCB itself, there is a chipset which is OPL1000, and there's a couple of dev pads, and a serial connection for the chipset itself, and you'll find a couple of GPIOs that's been exposed, uh, uh, 3 volt and ground pads as well. Now, going to the website of the manufacturer of the chipset, I could not find any information about the power use which means the next step would uh, be to actually hook it up to a multimeter and check the current consumption. So I did that. Now in here you'll see that the chipset on power will use about 20 milliamps to actually get set and get ready for operation and then the current consumption will drop to a very small number. So I was able to measure about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 milliampere, so very little. Now that would increase when I would swipe the sensor across to about 10 milliampers for a couple of seconds, but uh, other than that the sensor would still go back to a minuscule power consumption. There was one more thing I wanted to find out, whether the device talks in sleep. So I've connected pocket meter in oscilloscope mode to TXNRX to see what happens. And uh, it looks like there is some activity on TRX and RX pins, so device is talking. In a similar fashion, I've connected 3.3 volts in the ground from the serial and there is a voltage available uh, on those pins as well. It's too soon to tell how long this will last on the battery, so I only had it for a couple of days. Now, the battery is still showing full, and the information submitted to me says that it should last up to three months on two AAA batteries. I guess time will tell how long it's gonna last in real use. Because of the dev pads available on the PCB and the GitHub SDK available, I have absolutely no doubts that sooner or later gonna, someone's gonna get something interesting running on this contact sensor. The question is what? What else we could add to a sensor like this to make it more fun? 
So I'm still slightly confused because some of guys are about to release an array of Zigbee sensors with the Zigbee bridge. Now those sensors are going to be smaller than this and probably going to last much longer on the battery than this Wi-Fi version of the door contact. Now for, in order for this device to succeed, the pricing would have to be right and I would expect this uh, sensor to be somewhere in between more expensive than RF433 but cheaper than actual Zigbee sensor. I guess we're going to find out in a couple of weeks. So guys, I do not have a posting schedule. If you're interested in a follow-up or articles that I sometimes write, uh, then follow me on the social media of your choice to get a notification. As for now guys, I'm going to say thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Take care! Bye!